Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tai and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be talking about optimizing Windows 10 games to be played on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac via Parallels. So this video is going to be already assuming that you've watched the Parallels on M1 Mac Windows 10 gaming video. If you haven't, then please click on the top right hand side of the screen to take you back to that tutorial. So this video is going to assume that you've already installed the VHDX file and set up a virtual machine of Windows 10 ARM. So at the time of recording, at the end of December 2020, the issue that most people have is that they don't have the build that enables x64 emulation on Windows 10. The current build of the Windows 10 Pro Insider Preview is the 2023 version of the build, and this does not quite yet support the x64 emulation. If you don't have x64 emulation, it means that most games won't install or run. I can't even install the game, let alone play the game at all. And what we need to have is the x64 emulation enabled. It's possible that if you're watching this in the future, that this x64 emulation is already incorporated into the current VHDX file. If you're using a build that doesn't support x64 emulation yet, then you'll need to upgrade to a build that does. And what you need to do is click on the start button and type in the word insider and then we'll get inside the Windows Insider program settings. Once we're here, what we need to do is to link to our Windows Insider account. So once I've linked to my account, I'll need to turn on the diagnostic feedback settings and allow optional diagnostic settings here. And I'm gonna press the back button to go back to Windows Insider program. And then I'll have the option here to choose my settings so that I can get onto different builds. So currently I'm on the beta channel build, and if I click on this now, I'll be able to choose between the dev channel and the release preview channel. And what we want to be able to do is click the dev channel, because this will give us the latest build which does use x64 emulation. So once we have our insider setting changed to the dev channel, I can now press the back button here, and what it's going to do is allow us to click on the update button here, and it's gonna download the actual update once we click on check for updates here. So here we have the 21277 release here that we need to install. So I wanna click here and click download and install and let that run and download and install. So once the Windows update has completed and you've restarted the virtual machine, you'll see that this build number in the bottom right hand side of the screen has changed. And what we have here is the version 21277, which allows us to run x64 applications under emulation. So now when I go to Steam and go to Grand Theft Auto, I actually have an install button instead of a grayed out button, and this will allow us to install the game. Now, in theory, we should be able to install every single game on Steam. Um, we should be able to install them, but they're not necessarily going to run. I do recommend the website AppleSiliconGames.com, which is a database of games compatible with the M1 Apple Silicon Max. So if I click on the game section here, you can kind of have a scroll through and see what games do work and don't work on the system. So I'm just gonna show you an article on the Parallels website about how many cores and how much RAM you should allocate to your virtual machine. And the basic recommendation is that we should be using half the number of processors that the computer has and half the amount of available memory. And this is counterintuitive because you might think that allocating the maximum number of eight cores would actually make the virtual machine run faster. But if you allocate more than half of your cores to the virtual machine, it means that the host, which is the Mac OS operating system is going to be starved of resources and it's actually going to make your virtual machine much slower. This is the same with RAM as well. On this particular computer, I've got eight gigabytes of RAM. And if I start allocating more than four gigabytes, which is half of eight, then it's, it's actually going to decrease performance overall. If we did have a 16 gigabyte M1 piece of hardware, then we would be able to allocate eight gigabytes of RAM and we'd probably get much better performance. So the next things I'm gonna get you to install are the various dependencies that most games will need. So one of the main things that we need to be able to install to game on the Windows ARM system is to download the Visual C++ redistributable file. So what you need to do is to install the x64 version of this file. So just download it and then install the file. The next thing is to download and install the DirectX end user runtime web installer. And this will install all of the library files that you need to run almost every single DirectX game. So this includes DirectX 9, 10, 11, X audio, X input, etc. And this is gonna be another dependency that you'll need. Another thing that I've noticed as well is that if you have a game that requires a launcher, for example, Grand Theft Auto V requires the Rockstar Social Club launcher, 
The actual launcher doesn't necessarily install when you install Grand Theft Auto V on Steam. And if you try to launch Grand Theft Auto V without having Rockstar Social Club installed, it's going to give you an error message. So what you should do is to install the Rockstar Social Club and other similar launchers separately. So if you should go to the website and then click on the download launcher button and then install it separately. And then when you actually launch it from Steam, it's going to work much better. So the other thing that people ask quite often is whether the gamepad is supported on Parallels. And the gamepad is supported. And so in order to enable the gamepad, what you need to do is to go into the Parallels settings in Configure here. And then you need to go to the USB and Bluetooth menu settings. And then you need to check this Share Bluetooth Devices with Windows. So once I have ticked this button, I can actually go into the standard Bluetooth settings and then I can actually pair my Xbox wireless controller directly. So in the last section of this video, I'm gonna talk about game compatibility in a bit more detail. So despite the fact that we have installed this version of Windows with the X64 emulation enabled, lots of games, especially competitive games, won't actually allow you to launch, even though that we have this emulation enabled. This is because it's detecting that we have an ARM64 chip and that it's using the emulation, and lots of games don't like that. So anything with this kind of um, panda face on it, which is the easy anti-cheat logo, anything which uses a Kenny kind of anti-cheat like Punk Buster, um, they don't like having virtual machines um, running their software. Um, other games don't work just in general. They won't launch or they won't, uh, they'll crash straight away. And uh, what you'll need to do is to check the Apple Silicon Games website for actual compatibility for those um, particular games. It's really hard to say what will run and what won't run. And what I found in general is that basically on parallels, DirectX 9 games work really well. DirectX 11 games kind of work, but not necessarily at very good speed. You might find better kind of compatibility and performance using crossover. Um, but generally speaking, I think that more games work on parallels than they do on crossover. And um, I think that there's a little bit more effort and focus on the parallel side of the development. I do hope to see a couple of APIs being enabled. I hope to see Vulkan being enabled. I hope to see DirectX 12 games being enabled. So for example, games like Cyberpunk 2077, they just simply will not launch at the moment. Technically, Cyberpunk 2077 will actually launch um, on the M1 Apple Silicon Mac via Parallels, but it'll crash straight away. Um, it's listed here as being playable on Stadia and GeForce Now, but really, to play it natively on the actual local computer, that's not quite possible yet. And it'll only be possible once DirectX 12 development has taken a, a step forward in that regard. And that's something that will happen in the future, most likely. Most people didn't think that Parallels would be able to support DirectX 11, but they did manage to pull off that feat. And I have no doubt that one day in the future, DirectX 12 will be supported on this system too. Anyway, I hope you find this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next tech video.